Hello everyone, welcome to JSS Academy. My name is Vikas Kumar and in today's lecture video, we are going to discuss a new topic, a stratigraphy. A stratigraphy, all of you may familiar with your undergraduate, may have studied it in your postgraduate. A stratigraphy is, we all know, one of the most boring subjects followed by the paleontology. But still, we have to study because in every competition of competitive examination related to the geology, the questions from the stratigraphy are definite. Two to three questions in GATE, NET and GSI. In every competitive examination, there is a definite traces of questions from the stratigraphy. So, uh, we all know that it is the one of the boring subject, but still we have to study. The boring subject a stratigraphy is because the whole subject is more or less theoretical. There is a no very worst concept. We have to many things we have to remember. We have to mug up the things and we have to uh, remember the, their lithostratigraphy, the different, uh, <coughs> different, different names, different, different locality that makes it the different from other subject. So, but still uh, we have to uh, study. So, in ancient uh, uh, literature or in uh, previous literature, the stratigraphy is also known as the historical geology, history of geology. So, because it gives the clues, it gives the uh, about the ages, clues about the formation that formed at the different, different localities. So, <coughs> when we are going to study the stratigraphy, previously for a geologist, the major focus in geology to study is about the rocks. For that, in geology, there is a separate branch called petrology. In petrology, we studied in very detailed form the, about the rock from micro level to macro level. We studied about the rock like their texture, their geochemistry, their mineralogy, their megascopic feature like their structure, their different different uh, temperature pressure relationship. We all they studied in detail about the um, rock in igneous petrology, either in sedimentology or either in metamorphic petrology but what i didn't focus at that uh, on that time in petrology is that one thing which is very important is time in which time which rock is formed we were not interested during the study of the igneous petrology sedimentology or metamorphic petrology so we are going to now study the stratigraphy. In a stratigraphy, that formation, that strata, when we relate the, that strata and that is of that strata formation and type locality there, then we give it the term that is called the stratigraphy. So, now you may clear that what is different uh, from the petrology, a stratigraphy is, in a stratigraphy, we will going to study the strata and their refer to the rela relation of the, that strata with the time scale, with the geological history, with their area, in which area they are formed, they were formed in, in uh, geological time scale. So, when we relate these uh, strata with the time, then we uh, uh, give the new name that is called the stratigraphy, right? So, in stratigraphy, the one, the major factor that play an important role is the geological time. So, in earth history, what changes took place, at what ages, what rock was formed, what strata, what sequences were formed, that all comes under the one roof that is called the stratigraphy. So, in stratigraphy, we will also study the igneous petrological rock, igneous rock, we will also study the metamorphic rock, we will also study the sedimentary rock. All these types of rock uh, that uh, found in a uh, different uh, era, different time, we will going to study in the stratigraphy. So, before going to the deep, so let us see now, first of all, the definition of the stratigraphy. Description of all rock bodies forming the earth crust and their organization into distinctive, useful and mappable units. How? Based on their inherent properties or attributes. Why? 
then in order to establish the distribution and relation in a space and their succession in time this one is very this one is very important factor time and to interpret geological history so in uh, stratigraphy we are going to correlate it with the time of the and the strata so the time we may calculate the time absolute age or relative age it depends on in how geological um, time scale in which geological time the strata was formed like for example if the strata was from archean period of time if the Arche uh, strata was from archean then the possibility or the probability to find the fossils is very less because at that time the life was not very diverse and the existence of life is very less so we will not expect the fossils in the archean rock but when we encounter the rock from the paleozoic then we can correlate it with the fossil age that is the relative age but for the archean strata formation that is archean age formation we have to date the rock that is absolute age we have to find the absolute age sometimes it may be difficult because and it may not be very actual sometimes because the different different dating methods give sometimes plus minus uh, few million years different ages like one uh, who uh, counted the age or find the age from the jirkan dating same upv method and one who find the ages from same upv method from the monazite dating they may find the different ages that is why in geological time scale many of the in uh, period you find the plus minus some ages plus minus that is so all that depends on the experiment to experiment that is not our path but we have to know that that in archean there is a very less abundance of fossils so that's why we are more inclined towards the date dating of the age uh, like uh, we have to more we have to date that rocks to find their age absolute but in a paleozoic rock like after the cambrian there is a number of fossils that existed that is called the biological explosion at the boundary of the precambrian cambrian after that we can correlate it with the like trilobite number of molluscous families were present in the paleozoic time so all of these things we will going to study in our stratigraphy beyond this we will also going to study in this lecture like uh, from archean from the formation of the earth the what changes took place in the earth history like how the changes took place and when life first of all come into existence at the boundary like in earth geological history in the earth geological time scale there is a four well established boundary that is first of all first of them is archean protozoic boundary second of them is pre cambrian cambrian boundary third is permian triassic boundary and fourth one is uh, kt boundary paleozoic trias <laughs> kt boundary so at this all the boundary that the major changes monumental changes taking took place took in place like in archean protozoic archean or protozoic boundary like uh, around the 2500 million year there were monumental changes took place in the earth history uh, uh, similarly at the pre cambrian cambrian boundary there is a number of changes like uh, that is marked by the biotic major biotic changes like previous uh, prior to the cambrian there were no diversifications of the life but after the cambrian there is a number of invertebrate and hard part fossils are found in the rocks so there there is a major changes in the uh, strata uh, way of formation of the rock that all the changes at the after that boundary there is a major biological explosion at that time after that paleozoic there is a another boundary problem that is the permian triassic boundary at that boundary there is a major mass extinction almost 96% of the species were extinct at the permian triassic boundary and uh, all the uh, almost 97% or something uh, more the marine species were extinct at that time there were many causes uh, due of the extinction of the this uh, at this uh, boundary problem after that there is a major one boundary problem is Cretaceous. <coughs> 
केटी बाउंड्री प्रॉब्लम एट दैट टाइम वंस अगेन देर इज अ मेजर फॉसिल्स वर एक्सटिंट एट दैट टाइम लाइक इंपॉर्टेंट वन इज डायनासोर एंड ऑल द रीजन बिहाइंड इज द मेनी द एस्ट्रॉड इम्पैक्ट वॉलकैनिक एक्टिविटी देर इज ए डेक एंड ट्रैप देर इज अ सी लेवल चेंजेस दिस ऑल कोमुलेट्स एंड एट दैट टाइम देर इज अ मेजर चेंजेस टेकिंग प्लेस बिलो द बाउंड्री एंड अब द बाउंड्री सो दिस ऑल आर चेंजेस थ्रू द जियोलॉजिकल टाइम स्केल and these changes are we are studied with the uh, study of the strata that what we found in which geological time is all says about uh, <coughs> with the help of the fossils so in stratigraphy uh, after the uh, studying the geological time scale then we are interested for our uh, according to our syllabus then we are uh, we will study about the different different tectonic divisions of the india like tectonically india divided into different different cratons like in archean the formations was different and in paleozoic the formation was different like in archean there were major craton that we found today is of archean age like four well established craton that we uh, today found in the earth, uh, indian subcontinent is one is dharwar craton the other is sihboom craton third one is bastar craton and fourth one is bundelkhand craton these all the cratons are all of them are from archean age after that in protozoic there is a well defined very good sedimentary basins that we found today is purana that is they are popularly called as purana basins like their kadappa basins and the other is bindhan basin other also important purana basin is chatisgarh kaladagi bhima indravati these all there are small scale basins but two important basins are one is the bindhan basin and second one is kadappa basin so these two are been, uh, formed basins in the indian subcontinent so these are all the history before the cambrian pre cambrian right before the protozoic time these all the histories are protozoic so now you can relate that the in indian subcontinent the formation of the archean age is well established by the craton these are four well defined craton and from archean after archean in the protozoic there is a two well established uh, sedimentary basins purana basin which is also called that is one is kadappa basin and other is bindhan basin these all the uh, <coughs> phenomena that happens in the be before cambrian but after cambrian after cambrian there is in if we are talking about the paleozoic then there is no any single larger formation in the peninsula india we need term here the peninsula so first of all let us see <coughs> let us see let us see the physiographic division of the india physiographic division of the india this one is a map of the physical map of the india so physiographically india divided into three parts three parts first one is extra peninsula india the second one is indo gangetic plain and third one is peninsula india extra peninsula india these sections are the extra peninsula india in which the mighty himalaya the gigantic himalayas are present there in the indo gangetic plain further it divided into different different path like vavar khadar uh, tarai region that is not our study part but uh, we should know that these are the division that uh, plains indo gangetic plains are divided into uh, different different uh, plains after that this one is the two important topographic high that we know that western ghat region and eastern ghat region in the eastern and western at the eastern and western boundary of the indian map in the physical map after that there is a huge landmass that we call this one is the peninsula india this one in peninsula india the major formation of craton you can see here in the next cartoon this one is the tectonic division of the indian subcontinent in which you can see here the major craton that formed is all the in the peninsula india this one is the in the southern part there is a dharwar craton in the this part eastern part there is a sihboom craton and this one is the bastar craton and in the middle of the india there is a bundelkhand craton you may confused uh, we didn't mention here the arabali craton that we all study what happens here we will define later the definition of craton 
Now a days in recent literature, the Arabli is no longer a Cretan. Where all the uh, geologists uh, said that that Arabli is not a Cretan. The reason behind it that the Cretan word is only now restricted for the Archean age. The Cretan body is only nowadays restricted for the Archean age, but Arabli is of Proterozoic or uh, further more is that is why the uh, one of the this is the one of the main reason that is why uh, they are not going to consider Arabli as a Cretan. The second reason is from Proterozoic the movement uh, along the plate is already there. So if the once the movement is there, we will uh, study uh, later that if the movement is there, then they are not the Cretan. The, the definition of Cretan is they are the stable from a longer period of time in the geological history. So if the movement is there, then obviously there is a tectonic activity and there is a some movement, then uh, that is the not the Cretan. So now the Arabli is transferred in the mobile uh, like orogenic belt. Arabli is not so the only the four major craton in Indian subcontinent that is established is Dharwar, Bastar, Singhum, and Bundelkhand craton, right? So in southern part there is a Dharwar, in middle there is a Bundelkhand, in eastern part there is a Singhum craton, and here this is the Bastar craton. We will later on the next video we will study one by one dharwar bastar sihbhum and bundelkhand keton before that in this lecture video we have to studied about in detail about the geological time scale that uh, after the formation of the earth about the 4.5 billion year that what the changes took place from archean to till now right so let us start about the that so before that Look at here the basic principle of the stratigraphy. This is not very important topic, but in some uh, in your syllabus they clearly mention that the basic principle of the stratigraphy. So four to five basic uh, there is a basic principle of the stratigraphy. That first one is order of superposition. Second one is horizontal uh, original horizontality. Third one is lateral continuity. Fourth one is cross cutting relationship. Next one is inclusions, unconformities, fossil succession and uniformitarianism. These are all fundamental principle of the stratigraphy. Let us see one by one. Before that, look at here the name of the scientist who give this principle. Because uh, I saw the previous JSI question, they ask about, by the name of the scientist and the principle of stratigraphy. So uniformitarianism given by the James Hutton. These three principles, law of superposition, principle of horizontal, original horizontality, principle of lateral continuity given by the Steno, Steno is the Steno principle and popularly known as it is the Steno principle. The third one is principle of cross-cutting relationship given by the James Hutton. The third one, principle of final succession that is given by the William Smith. So these are the name of the scientist that uh, who gives the this principle. So look at the one by one principle. The first one is uniformitarianism and catastrophism. The main point of this principle is this one. The study of the present is key to the past. That means that what is happening today is already is a clue for the in the earth geological history. That means the principle of uniformitism is that the process as operating on the earth present earth at present like sedimentation, erosion, it is a were the same in the past as well. This is the explanation of this word that is a, a study of the present is the key to the past this is the very popular statement of the principle of uniformitarianism and given by the james hutton james hutton james hutton okay now look at the next principle the next principle is order of this is also called the order of superposition right so, and as a superposition so what is it this uh, principle is that if uh, the deposition is taking place so suppose in three different time for in first time there is a deposition of this sediment like after some times the deposition other sediments deposited on this that 
and after some times the further the deposition is taking place so all these depositions if we uh, relate it with the time then this one is the oldest though who, who deposited the first and this one is the youngest so the order of superpositions states that then if these are deposited earlier then this one is the oldest in time and if uh, below then this one is the if you found succession like this then the bottom is the oldest and the top is the youngest unless and until there is a any tectonic activity were taking place right the always uh, remember this point that unless and until there is any tectonic activity were taking place because if tectonic activity were taking place then they may uh, tilt and <laughs> Uh, promote the lower sediment into the upper strata like very famous example like thrust uh, in fold belt there is a uh, if the formation was younger then they may place the formation uh, below the oldest so this one only we can correlate it and relate this uh, principle if they are deposited on the similar fashions like horizontal this fashions only okay <coughs> now let us see the next one is original horizontality original horizontality so what it states that if the deposition if the there is a no any tectonic activity then layers now inclined must have been deposited as nearly horizontal layer so initially when deposition were taking place then it must follows the horizontal original horizontality that means all the depositions were taking place like this fashion this fashion right so this one is law of original horizontality these conditions will come after if there is any tectonic activity is taking place then this can be tilted but if there is a no any tectonic place then originally they were must be deposited like this the third one is original <coughs> original lateral continuity original lateral continuity it states that layers of sediment now truncated layers of sediment now truncated truncated must have been deposited as laterally continuous layer so whatever we found today is truncated must have deposited earlier in this fashion this is it the next one is this one is very important uh, uh, principle that it has said that the basic it is known as the cross cutting relationship cross cutting relation this one is known as cross cutting relationship so what it states that it states that if there is a presence of cross cutting like the dike or seals like this if there is a presence of cross cutting present in the strata then the age of this cross cut then the age of this crust uh, cross cut is younger in comparison to the formation always remember that the age of this cross cut will always younger in comparison to the strata like this one is before the cross cut strata the, and this one is after then the age of this one must be younger in comparison to this so the, it states that the basic principle of cross cutting relationship is that when something cross cuts a sedimentary sequence it is not only valid for sedimentary sequence you can also apply it in uh, igneous or metamorphic the most uh, mostly we uh, studied the this type of sedimentary sequences that is why the reason here the sedimentary sequence but it is not always true for uh, not only true for sedimentary sequence it is equally valid for the igneous uh, sequences also so cross cut a sedimentary sequence it is always younger than the sequence it is always younger than the sequence in other words all cross cutting features produced after the sediment is deposited <coughs> after the sediment is deposited <coughs> now let us see the next one next one is principle of inclusion principle of inclusion 
principle of inclusion what is stated early previous in previous slide you you saw that the cross cut has younger is in comparison to the strata just opposite if the inclusion is present in the strata then they indicate that these one are older than the strata just opposite right the inclusions are older than the strata while cross cuts are younger than the strata these two points we should always remember you can understand that why inclusions are older because if the formations like depositions were taking place then the uh, from the extra uh, extravasionals uh, some uh, like uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, fragments of the other rocks or inclusions like they if they are eroded and transported from any places and deposited in that sediment then that fragments definitely have older age in comparison to the uh, these uh, strata that is why if the inclusion is present in that uh, strata then they indicate that the inclusion is older age in comparison to the these formations so it uh, states that the principle of inclusion is that they are all older than the rock in which they are deposited right this is obvious because they are derived from denudation of pre-existing rock sedimentary rocks are often made up of clasts or fragments of older rocks that are carried by river water that is transporting media any other medium deposited in a basin after deposition these clasts get consolidated into the rock that is why they indicate the older age in comparison to the strata now these are overall the principles of the uh, stratigraphy now the one uh, short topic is category of stratigraphic classification or you can say the correlation 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 so <coughs> the stratigraphic correlation is mainly done by the four different different <coughs> way like one is lithostratigraphic unit the second one is biostratigraphic unit the third one is magnetostratigraphic unit and the fourth one is chronostratigraphic unit so in lithio stratigraphic unit there is a various a small on the basis of the ages there and the formation there is a different different ages like the formation group member bed flow and these all comes under the lithio stratigraphy similarly in biostratigraphy there is a different different range zone like range zone bio zone interval zone these are all comes under the biostratigraphy in magnetostratigraphy we saw the uh, we are interested to know about the polarity that how the similarly in similar fashion the uh, changes were taking place like one uh, in one the normal polarity in which time period in which time period there, uh, there were uh, reversal polarity and in chronostratigraphic unit we are interested to correlate with the different different time unit with the different there are like uh, system period uh, era yon and we we are interested to relate it with the different different geological time so these are the four different criteria uh, to correlate the stratigraphy these are not very important topic that is why we are not going to discuss detail out here we already provided you in notes the material about all these lithostratigraphy biostratigraphy chronostratigraphy what the important thing about this looks here that in lithostratigraphic the units are group formation member beds flow in biostratigraphy there is a different different uh, on the basis of the fossil zone range bio zones range zone interval zone lineage zone assemblage zone abundance zone and other kinds of <coughs> bio zones in magnetostratigraphy there is a sequence of the normal and reversal polarity that look at here this one this one is very important chart you should remember many times they asked you the uh, this uh, <coughs> chart this uh, polarity pattern uh, that in which time uh, there is a normal pattern and in which time there is a reversal pattern right so you can see here the nowadays we are in if normal then uh, starting from here gilbert goss matuyama and brunhers so this one if this one is normal then this one is reversal again this one is normal and this one is again reversal this pattern that follows the gilbert goss matuyama branhas these these relations are 
only for the uh, up to the Jurassic age. Jurassic age. Because the oldest rock that we found on the ocean floor is of about 200 million year. That is more or less uh, we can correlate it with the Jurassic case. So these sequences are very important. Sometimes they also ask about the this one like Jaramillo uh, belongs to in which case and in which reversal pattern. Either it is of normal or either it is of uh, reversal. In Matuama, Gosh like Koina, Mammoth in which uh, time period they belong like this one reunion in which polarity they belongs so you have to remember this chart these are from you will also find detail about it either in the Keshi Kondi or uh, in the flip carrion vines these two books are very good for the tectonics and in tectonics you will study in it in details like about this and supercontinent cycle you will uh, study in the detail in the tectonics we are not going to discuss in very detail about this only I want to explain this uh, only because uh, you have to remember this uh, reversal pattern because many times they ask you this pattern normal and reversal pattern Gilbert Gauss Matuyama Branhash <coughs> and for chronostratigraphic unit these are the uh, way to recorrelate this one is the very important from this sections they also asked many times a questions like what is equivalent of ionotherm ionotherm is the chronostratigraphic unit while this one is the geochronologic unit this one is the chronostratigraphic and this one the geochronologic unit in this ionotherm erotherm system this one is very important many times this asked in your previous examination that means system is related to which chronostratigraphic unit the geochronologic unit so system is related to period series is epoch stage is age if you have to problem then you can use the menomics but i will not recommend this to use this type of menomics because these are like a sweet poison if you forget one word then this will be very difficult to remember so every erased system seriously should submerged every erased system seriously should submerge equivalent everyone eradicated polio easily after sorts these are nothing uh, more but these are the menomics that uh, made it for the easy to ease to the remember so <coughs> uh, if you can you can remember then forget it uh, you can remember this are very short term okay so these are the uh, chronostatigraphic unit 